Hello, this is David Godibadze from My Two Solutions Network, and today I'm going to show you how the rule set on the Unified Platform works. I have a simple topology here. I have the internet, the Unified Router, and the inside hosts. And let's say you have a traffic flaws from the internet you want to reach your computer inside. That could be just a computer, web server, PBX server, jump box, anything you want. And this guy here has the IP address 192.168.1.10. You see this subnet and dot 10, this is the last octet on the topology. And if we have the internet flow coming from the internet through the router to the computer. First of all, this IP is not routable on the internet, so nobody can reach this IP just like that. We have to do a little bit more work to allow that. And first what we want to do is to tell the traffic to go to the public IP of our router, because that's the IP that is routable on the internet. The ISP will deliver the traffic to our router. Let's say the port is 9443. Then we have to tell router that the, anything you receive on that port and IP address, forward this to the internal IP to a different port. Or it could be a same port. It really doesn't matter. So this IP, this port here, on destination IP and port can be anything you want. This port also on the original packet can be anything you want. However, the destination IP should be something that is on your router. ISP should know that this IP, this 12.34.101.2 lives on your router. And that's when internet in rule set comes into play. This traffic right here, this traffic, in order to allow this traffic, we have to add the rules in the internet in rule set. Now, Unify being smart does that automatically once you add the port for our rules. Let's see how does it work. I have a Unify Ultra here, UCG Ultra, and I'm going into settings, then security, and then tab port forwarding. Here, I'm going to name it YouTube test port forward. Then I'm going to choose which interface I want to listen for the incoming traffic. I can do both or first or the secondary ISP. On this router, I have two ISPs, or at least I can have. That's why I have this option here. Now, destination IP is DHCP, and the reason for that is if I go into internet settings, this IP here is assigned automatically. It's not statically configured IP address. That's why we have here DHCP. That's okay. If you have statically assigned the IP, you can choose any of the IP in your position to do that. Then I'm saying that uh, I want to listen for the incoming traffic from any location or from a specific source. Let's do any location just for this video. And I'm listening for the port 9443. And I want to forward this traffic into internal host. That would be dot 10, I think. And then 443 because it's our web server. Do I want to allow TCP or UDP or both? Let's do TCP and add entry. Name it again, YouTube test. Now this rule here, what it will do is that any traffic that comes to this interface here will be forwarded to the internal host to this port 443 because of the port for our rules. And port forward rule automatically added the internet in rule in the firewall rule set. So let's go into traffic firewall rules and as you can see, YouTube test rule set is here accepting TCP connection from any source and then destination is our internal IP. This is the internet in rule set and this is how it works. If I do here a specific source IP address, let's say I want to allow it from the 5.5.5.5 IP only, then this will update the rule inside the firewall rule set. So I'm gonna refresh this you can see that source IP is now 5.5.5.5. You can obviously change this rule. I mean, you cannot because this was added by port for, but you can add new rules on the top of it. And this is how the internet in rule set works. Now let's talk about the internet out rule set. The internet out rule set sits again on the edge of the router and controls what traffic leaves the router. Now keep in mind, this is not to control what traffic gets into the router, but what leaves from the router. Here you can see that I have remote VPN user, traffic comes into the router. As soon as this traffic decides to leave the router, it will hit the internet out traffic rule set. And you can control should this VPN user leave the router or not. For example, let's say you gave the remote 
remote VPN user the specific routes and they can only access certain subnets. If they change the config of the Wireguard VPN user, they can send all the traffic to this router, not just the traffic you have on the inside, but all the traffic. And they will consume your bandwidth and they will use your public IP to surf the internet. If you want to prevent that, internet out rule set is what you're going to use for that. And that's internet out. It blocks or controls pretty much anything that leaves the router using the internet interface. Now let's talk about the internet local. The internet local rule set is controlling anything that goes to the router specifically. Now, if you, you may think that, that this port forward also goes to the router, but it, it doesn't. Even though we hit the public IP with the original packet, we still go through the router to reach this host. So here we still use the internet in. However, the traffic that goes to the destination and there is no port forward for this IP. Let's say I'm going to the 4.34.101.2. That's the original IP address, right? And there is no port forward. I'm just going to the router. That's where the internet local rule set is used to control that traffic. You may open the SSH port for your router to access it from your other location, from your office, for example, or from home, right? That can be controlled by the internet local. So if you go into rule set here, and we filter to show internet local only. Again, the, we have the same three rule set that we have on the internet in, because we want to allow established traffic, returning traffic, related traffic like DNS, ICMP echoes, and then block the unnecessary traffic by blocking the invalid traffic and any other traffic. This is what internet local does. Now let's go into LAN in and the C what it does. In the LAN in, if you have multiple subnets, let's say you have IoT subnet and you have user subnet, and you want to control IoT going to the user subnet, LAN traffic through the router, that's when LAN in comes into play. In the LAN in, you can say that the IoT device is not allowed to reach user's device because these IoT devices are usually controlled by the cloud. They are less protected, less patched because majority of people don't do the patch. So you don't want some cloud service to be hacked and then control your cloud-based devices. And those devices then start scanning and attacking your users in your network. So what do you do? You filter the traffic, you say IoT devices cannot reach the users because I'm placing the rule set in the LAN in. That would be here in the LAN, LAN in, this guy here. Currently I have one rule, but if I have multiple networks here, I can add the rule set saying that the IoT device, IoT subnet, should I say, cannot reach the user subnet, block it. This is LAN in. Again, through the router, but from the inside networks. And if you want to block users going into IoT, you use the same LAN in rule set, you just swap the source and destination. Let's talk about the LAN local. Just like on the internet local, anything that goes to the router, but from the inside network is controlled by the LAN local. Let's say you want to limit the SSH access to your router. By default, you have any, any land in allowance, right? You allow everything from the land. And if you want to limit the SSH access or you want to control your ubiquity from the LAN, not from the Unify, from a specific host only, you can use LAN local and filter out everything that you don't want to allow and allow traffic from the specific user only. You also want to block the IoT devices reaching out your router directly. They should not be able to reach on SSH port or HTTPS port or anything to the router. They just need to use the this guy as the gateway. So you want to add the rule set that says IoT subnet cannot reach router. And for that, there is a LAN local subnet. And let's talk about the LAN out. And this is the last rule set we are going to talk about today. Now, imagine you have remote VPN users going to the router and then reaching out the host, inside host. The only way to control this is to use LAN out. Just like with the remote VPN user going out, when we go out from the router, but towards the inside network, we have to use LAN out because there is no rule set assigned to the VPN interface. So the remote VPN user is pretty much, they have freedom. They can go wherever they want. They can surf the internet, they can go LAN. And if you want to limit that, you're gonna say this remote subnet, remote VPN subnet source and destination is gonna be users. And then the rule set is going to be LAN out that way, 
when remote VPN user comes and terminates to the router and tries to reach the users or the IoT devices or anything else or even internet, you have to use out rule set, LAN out for the inside networks and the internet out for the outside networks. And this was the rule set's explanation of unified routers, how the rule set works. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Thanks for watching. This was David Godibadze from Mighty Solutions Network.